Good morning, everyone. Welcome to your class. Today we'll do English one, and the poem is the school boy. The school boy, and this is the last lesson of your syllabus for term one. Okay. Now the objectives of this lesson is to, as you know, to read a poem, to understand, then to identify new words, new vocabulary. Vocabulary means new new words that you don't know. or you've never heard of before and also one very important objective or learning outcome of this lesson is to know what goes through a child when he is forced to go to school when someone forces you to go to school you only know what is going through you yes especially if you hate school especially if you don't like to school what goes through you that only you can understand nobody else can understand So this is that kind of a poem where a school boy who hates to go to school, especially in the summer, he hates to go to school. Okay, so this uh, poem is based in England, and I will be explaining to you or telling you something about the poet in my upcoming video about William Blake, who is the poet of this poem, and he is from England. So in England, summers are beautiful. Winters are very very cold. but summers are beautiful they are just warm and cool and not hot like what we have in india summers are beautiful there and in this poem this boy talks about the summer season where he is forced to go to school and he does not like any part of going to school especially in the summer season he wants to play he wants to just stay at home he wants to roam about look at nature he compares himself to to birds then he talks to parents also in the last paragraph we will understand how he is telling parents why do you want to shorten my life why do you want me to send why do you want to send me to school so he is questioning the parents as well so i will be explaining this to you in the video please continue watching it and the objectives as i've told you please write them down objectives are to read a poem to understand to identify new words and vocabulary and to understand how uh, what goes through a boy what feelings a boy has when he is forced to go to school okay this poem actually is about formal learning where children are told to go to school and they have to educate themselves it's about a small boy okay he does not understand the importance of education as of now but later on education does help us but he is questioning the very fact that why do we have to go to school It's all about his complaints. So continue watching the video. So welcome to the poem, "The School Boy" by William Blake. What you see in, on the screen in front of you is a picture or a portrait. Portrait is a drawing of William Blake by Thomas Phillips in 1807. Uh, Thomas Phillips drew this portrait, like you can see in the picture. Now the date of birth of William Blake is given here. He was born on 28th November 1757 in Soho, London, England. Died 12 August 1827, aged 69. He was 69 years old in Charing Cross, London, England. He was he died there. Occupation: He was a poet, a painter, and a printmaker. He used to make prints. Genre. visionary poetry visionary means someone who can look into the future and know what is coming so he was quite a visionary so his poems were all based on the future like what people think would think and poetry literary movement romanticism romanticism comes from the word romantic but his poems are not actually romantic i know when i say the word romantic what comes to your mind but is not that way at all it's about inspiration it's about uh, the thoughts of an individual of a of a person that's the meaning notable works his famous works are all these mentioned here songs of innocence and of experience the marriage of heaven and hell the four zoas jerusalem milton and did those feet in ancient time so these are his notable works not only these there are hundreds of poems and books written by him but these are some of his famous ones notable means were not worthy then his spouse spouse means his wife was catherine boucher uh, 1782 got married in 1782 and there you can see his signature that's his real signature so now you have the information about william blake so i suppose you can write a bio sketch on him you can use this information to write a bio sketch about uh, william blake Okay, so in case it comes in the exams, you have all the points. Enough that you remember these points. You don't have to write this for homework. Enough that you remember the dates and all that, and you can make up your own bio sketch. It will be very very easy for you once you have this information. 
So you can write this information in your copies. I'll be sending you a picture also of it. So you can copy it down in your copies. The school boy, the school boy in the poem is not a happy child. What makes him unhappy? Why does he compare himself to a bird that lives in a cage or a plant that withers when it should blossom? So this is the basic outline of the poem. The school boy in the poem is not a happy child. He is very very unhappy. What makes him unhappy? That we will come to know. Why does he compare himself to a bird that lives in a cage? Why does he think that he is the same as a bird living in a cage? Or a plant that withers when it should blossom? He compares himself also to a plant that withers. Withers means that dries up. Instead of blossoming, the plant dries up. So why does he compare himself to these two things? A bird in a cage and a plant that dries up or withers. So let's begin the poem. I love to rise in a summer morn when the birds sing on every tree. The distant huntsman winds his horn and the skylark, skylark sings with me. Oh, what sweet company. But to go to school in a summer morn, oh, it drives all joy away. Under a cruel eye ought outworn, the little ones spend the day in sighing and dismay. The first two paragraphs. So in the first paragraph, it's all very, very, a very, very happy, parag happy paragraph. Yes, he's talking about the summer morning and how he loves to rise. He says, I love to rise in a summer morn. I love to rise means I love to get up. On a summer morning. Morn here is short for morning. When the birds sing on every tree. There are birds singing in every tree. The distant huntsman, huntsman winds his horn. The distant huntsman. Distant means the huntsman, you know, a hunter. Huntsman is a hunter. And the distant huntsman is a huntsman standing far away. He's far away. He can hear. Winds his horn. His horn means he's blowing a kind of a horn. And the skylark sings with me. Skylark is the name of a bird. And the skylark, si skylark sings along with this boy. Oh, what sweet company. This is the sweetest company ever. Most beautiful company. Bird singing on the tree. The distant huntsman winding his horn. And the skylark. This is the company that he loves when he gets up early in the morning. In the summer season. Okay, summer morning. Second paragraph again, second paragraph he comes down to not a uh, very, very uh, sad uh, situation for him where he talks about very negative things. In the first paragraph it's all positive, second, second paragraph quite negative. But to go to school in a summer morn, oh it drives all joy away. What joy does it drive? All his joy goes away. The singing of the birds, the huntsman's horn, the skylark, all these are joys and all these joys goes away as soon as he has to go to school. But to go to school in a summer morn, oh, it drives all joy away. All happiness goes away. Under a cruel eye outworn, under a cruel eye. Whose cruel eye in school, you think? The eyes of the teacher. Outworn, he gets very, very tired under the scrutiny or the continuous looking, um, looking at him. The teachers continuously looking at him, not only at him, but at all the students. And he's afraid of being punished and so on and so forth. And this gets him very, very outworn, gets him very, very tired. The little ones spend the day in sighing and dismay. Sighing, sighing means, oh no, oh my God, why to study? Oof, oof, these are all kinds of sighing. And dismay and sadness and terrible feeling comes to all these kids sitting in the classroom under the watchful eyes of the teacher. This tires them all, especially this particular schoolboy. He gets very, very tired just sitting in the classroom and listening to his teachers. So here he calls his teachers a cruel eye. The teachers have a cruel eye, he says, under the cruel eye outworn. Getting tired under the watchful eyes of the teacher. And this paragraph tells us about he, about the time that he has to go to school and he, how he hates it. So don't forget paragraph one is all about positivity. Second paragraph is all about negativity of this boy and about his going to school. Now third and fourth paragraph. Ah, then at times I drooping sit and spend many an anxious hour. Nor in my book can I take delight, nor sit in learning's bar, worn through with the dreary shower. How can the bird that is born for joy sit in a cage and sing? 
How can a child when fears annoy but droop his tender wing and forget his youthful spring? These are the third and fourth paragraphs. Then in the third paragraph, ah, then at times I drooping sit. Drooping sit means he does not sit straight. His nearly his whole body is on his desk. Like many of you, how you sit, especially in the afternoon session. After the second break, how you all sit, very tired after playing, eating, drinking. You all come into the classroom all sweaty and you practically lie down on the uh, desk. The so same way his shoulders are all on his desk. And spend many an anxious hour. Anxious means very worried. Every minute is very, very, it creates anxiety for him. He gets worried with every passing hour because he hates school. Nor in my book can I take delight. He said, I cannot enjoy what is there in my book. I cannot take delight. I cannot enjoy what is there in my book. Nor sit in learning's bower. Bower means a place where there is shade under, maybe especially under a, a tree which has leaves and is giving off shade. So he's, he's, he's saying that I cannot sit under the learnings bow. I can learn there also, he says. I can learn out in the open, but I'm not allowed to sit there. Worn through with the dreary shower. Shower here means not the shower, not the bathing shower, not that the shower that you have a bath in the bathroom. Shower here is the lecture of the teacher. The teacher keeps going on and on and on. Dreary, very dreadful lecture. Here, dreary shower means the lecture of the teacher that she's talking and talking and talking or he is talking and talking and talking and he's absolutely worn through. Worn through means absolutely tired just listening to the teacher going on with his and her lecture. Then in the fourth paragraph, he talks about the bird. How can the bird that is born for joy, he's comparing himself to a bird. He's saying, how can a bird that is born for joy sit in a cage and sing? How do you think a bird will enjoy sitting in a cage? A bird is meant to be free, to be flying free from tree to tree, to fly under the blue sky, to fly wherever it pleases. How will the bird feel? How do you think the bird feels sitting in a cage, in a small cage, not being able to fly? I feel like that in the classroom, he says. How can a child when fears annoy, but droop his tender wing and forget his youthful spring? How can a small child like me, when fears are annoying me, I'm getting annoyed by my fears, but all that frightens me. How can I forget my youthful spring? How can I forget my childhood? You are forcing me to forget my childhood. How do you expect me to forget my childhood? Now is the time for me to play and to run about and to enjoy nature. So how do you expect me to sit in the classroom and listen to the dreary lecture of the teacher? I am not meant to be doing this. I am meant to be playing outside in the beautiful summer morning. I am not to be sitting in the class here. So he droops, he droops his shoulders and he sits in the class hating the class. Okay, so this is what the fourth paragraph says. So don't forget the fourth paragraph. In the fourth paragraph, he compares himself to this bird and to this child who uh, fears, who has so many fears and these fears are Fears keep coming to his mind and he does not know how to deal it, deal with it because he is being forced to sit in the classroom. Now coming to the last two paragraphs. O father and mother, if buds are nipped and blossoms blown away and if the tender plants are stripped of their joy in the springing day by sorrow and care's dismay, how shall the summer arise in joy or the summer fruits appear? by William Blake. So in the last uh, two paragraphs he, he questions or he is asking every father and mother, oh father and mother if buds are nipped, buds are uh, flowers which are yet to be bloomed. First we have the buds that come out, yes small, small round buds and then these buds blossom. So he's asking the fathers and the mothers of the world if buds are nipped, if buds are broken and blossoms blown away. If you break the buds, there will be no blossom, there will be no flowers. And if the tender plants are stripped of their joy in the springing day, the tender plants, the young plants are meant to be growing in the beautiful spring season, these plants they grow. What if you break all the points of these flowers that are springing, that are growing? If you pluck them, if you break them, how will they grow? How will they enjoy nature? How, how will they be part of nature? He questions the fathers and mothers. Actually, he talks about himself. He's comparing himself to the plants here. He's saying, if you take away my childhood, then how will I grow up? 
He's comparing himself to the buds. You are nipping me in the bud. You are just uh, stopping me from growing, from enjoying my life. I am supposed to be playing outside in nature, but you are nipping my buds by sending me to school. You are stopping me from growing normally, he says. And if the tender plants are stripped of their joy in the springing day, springing day means when they should be growing, you are destroying them by sorrow and care's dismay. By making him sad, sorrow means sad. By making him sad, by make and making him think about school and making him so worried, dismay. He's in terrible time. He's having a very bad time. He's having a very sad time. He's feeling hopeless. He's feeling restless. So how can he do that to a child? A child, it's it's same like a plant. If you break the bud, the plant will not, the flower will not blossom. So you are taking away my youth, my my childhood, by sending me to school, by forcing me to school. How shall the summer arise in joy, or the summer fruits appear? How will the summer look beautiful? How will the summer be happy? In other words, how will I be happy, or the summer fruits appear? What will my future be? What will I gain from all this? What will I be able to give to the world? If you make me sad all the time by sending me to school. He says this, how will I bear fruit? A tree will bear fruit only if you take care of it, right? A plant will bear fruit, will give flowers or will give fruits. An apple tree will give apple. A mango tree will give mango only if you take care of it. If you just leave it like that, it will not give you any fruit. The same way the child is saying, I need to play. I need to be in touch with nature. I need to be playing. I need to be enjoying to give you fruit, to have a future. These are his complaints so on top we have these uh, word meanings you look at the word meanings nipped means to nip something in the bud means is the proverb also okay to nip something in the bud is also a proverb is to stop or destroy it at an early stage of its development if in case some of you are getting into bad habits so we nip it in the bud by punishing you and then you forget about that bad habit then stripped is short for stripped and a plant stripped of joy if joy is taken away from plants. If you take away the joy from the plants, they're meant to be growing and growing up high and tall and high and giving fruit. So they will not grow if you don't take care of them. This is what he questions everyone, questions the parents. So now coming to uh, working with the poem on page uh, 65, sorry 85, 85. Working with the poem. In the first question, find three or four words or phrases. It can be words or it can be phrases. In stanza one, paragraph one, that reflects the child's happiness and joy. Like I told you, the first paragraph is all about positivity. So from this paragraph, you have to pick out three or four words or phrases in stanza one that shows the boy's happiness. So it can be, uh, first phrase can be, love to rise love to rise it can be birds sing on every tree skylark sings with me yes the distant huntsman winds his horn sweet company so these all can be uh, words or phrases depicting happiness and joy that is the first paragraph in stanza two question number two in stanza two the mood changes it becomes all negative which words or phrases reflect the changed mood similar like part like uh, question number one but in number two his mood is changing and the first one can be but to go to school that can be one phrase drives all joy away can be one phrase under a cruel eye can be one phrase yes in sighing and dismay can be one phrase so any two any three you can choose from here okay that is question number two now three a cruel eye outworn stanza two with this this line is in stanza two refers to what the classroom which is shabby and noisy or the lessons which are difficult and uninteresting or the dull uninspiring life at school with lots of work and no play it is number three it's very obvious it's number three N number four question number four nor sit in learning's bar, one through one throw with the dreary shower. Which of the following is a close paraphrase of the lines above? Which paragraph? Nor can I sit in a roofless classroom when it is raining. Nor can I learn anything at school though teachers go on lecturing and explaining. Nor can I sit in the school garden for fear of getting wet in the rain. So there is no talk about rain in this in the paragraph. So it cannot be one, nor can it be three. So the correct answer is two. 
nor can I learn anything at school. The teachers go on lecturing and explaining. So this line, nor sit in learning's bar, worn through with the learn dreary shower. This can come as reference to context or write what you understand by these words. But this will be your answer. And you will not write it in the first person. You will write it in the third person. Yes? The poet complains about not being able to sit where he pleases. And you will not write I. It's not about you. It's about this child in the poem. So the child in the poem becomes the third person. So your reference to context will always be third person. These lines have been taken from the poem The School Boy by William Blake. Okay, It is about a boy. So you know about uh, reference Con uh, writing reference to context you write the whole paragraph which comes above these lines explain those lines and then when you reach these lines you explain these lines in your third paragraph that is something like reference to context you need to explain all that comes before these lines in the poem or in the story in short in very very short is a summary not even a summary it's a it's called something called a presi so it is a very very short writing of what comes before these lines and then when you come to these lines third paragraph you explain these lines okay so if you still have doubts let me know i'll explain to you reference to context again please write the summary yourself i'm sure you can write and these question answers you need not copy write in the copy you can leave it in the book but you write those three and four phrases question number one and two in the book itself for you to remember when to, for you to learn it when you come to this chapter Yes, in the next page we have some, we have one more poem there, the one for, oh, just read the poem. Just read it, have a read. Enjoy the poem. Okay, that's it. Summary, please write it down yourself. If you want me to check it, you can send it to me. And uh, the question answers, no need to write anywhere. Just leave it in the book. Any word, any paragraph, any line you don't understand, please send me a picture of that line and I shall explain it to you one to one. Okay, but that's all for today. Have a good day. Bye-bye.